Welcome back to the ESPN Esports Studio. Darren Kulinski with you, and the 222 lock is finally in place. Stage four coming at you, and our Overwatch League power rankings are also here to help us break that all down. Emily Rand from the West Coast. Emily, we're going to start off with number five, our lowest placement ever for this team, NYXL. Now, this is their lowest spot. We don't really have a lot of faith in them when it comes to the postseason, but in the regular season, NYXL is very, very uh, you know, hard to beat. But how will this 2-2-2 lock affect them moving forward? I think the only reason that NYXL are this low is basically based on their uh, Stage 3 playoff performance. I think 2 2 I think they'll do fine in 2-2-2. Um, they were one of the better GOATS teams. But I think the thing that I always want to call out about the NYXL is that they've had really good regular seasons. Like, every single stage they've been pretty consistent in having uh, strong records across every regular stage. So it's only in the playoffs where we see them have, you know, some difficult start to have some difficulty. So they should be able to adjust and adapt. If we remember, they were one of the first teams um, to really start coming out with Sombra Goats uh, with Sabiobi coming back in in stage three. So I think they should be able to adapt fine. You know, we know, like you mentioned, that they have a bunch of other DPS players on their bench as well. So um it's more of the playoffs that I worry about NYXL, honestly. Yeah, I'm really excited to see them actually, uh, what, what kind of lineup they're going to come out with. And then, obviously, when they do make the playoffs, because they have clinched, what will happen there? Will they choke, as usual? Or will we finally see? We never know. It's a coin flip, really. But so far, the coin flip has landed negative so far. Let's move on to number four, Hangzhou Spark. They ended our last power rankings at number two, so now they're number four. They're in the hunt for a playoff spot at 14 and seven. They're looking pretty good. Let me read off their schedule for you, though. They have the Hunters, Charge, Fuel, Dragons. Seems likely we'll see them in the playoffs. Yeah, I think I think we'll see Hangzhou in the playoffs. I always laugh when someone has Chengdu on the schedule, just because Chengdu, even in a more DPS-oriented meta, I think are still going to be a bit of a difficult team to prepare for. Um, however, uh, the the Chinese teams specifically have been experimenting with DPS compositions for a while, um, and that could mean that they have a more seamless transition into a roster lock where you have you do have those. Two, two DPS heroes uh, automatically instead of defaulting to triple triple. So, um, Hangzhou really improved last stage. We really saw them get a lot more cohesive as a team. We saw fewer communication issues between Gushui, their main tank, and the rest of the all Korean lineup. And I think that they're poised to do really well in this stage. Let's move on to number three, the San Francisco Shock. Solid at number three. They've had a really great uh, year so far. They have the highest map differential at plus 48. Let's again talk a little bit about that 2-2-2 lock because they've already clinched for the playoffs. How's that going to impact them in the long run? So it was funny because immediately before the their stage final against Shanghai, I asked Rascal, like, oh, are you worried about, you know, more DPS-oriented meta? And he's like, nah, because we have an entirely new lineup. And guess what? We saw that new lineup in the stage playoffs uh, for the finals. So I think the shock... Um, when we first saw them at the very beginning of the season, they did adapt a bit more slowly, if people remember, than other teams. And then they became one of, if not the best GOATS team, they uh, adjusted with the uh, Baptiste edition really, really well. Uh, so I think this is a team that can adapt, even if we might see them be a little bit shaky to start. But even in the stage playoffs, we saw them adjust and they were able to almost come back against Shanghai. So I think people who are saying that Shock are going to fall off um, could end up being proven very wrong this stage. Now, Emily, let's talk about our number two, the Vancouver Titans, 20 and one on the season, Pacific Division leaders. They're pretty much unstoppable, except for when they're not. Let's talk about their first match, though, against Shanghai to open up the stage, my match of the week. I'm looking forward to it. They're looking for a little bit of revenge. How do they claim it? I mean, that's going to be a big test for Vancouver because it's going to see how well they have adjusted to the new meta. I do think people are under 
underestimating Vancouver a bit because they have, again, it's kind of like the shock where they've been so good at goats that people are like, maybe they won't be able to adjust. Maybe they won't be able to adapt. Um, but, you know, people forget that they have st Stitch, they have Hawksall, they have some fantastic DPS players on this lineup. And I don't think the transition is going to be as rough for them as people may think, despite the fact that we did see them have some trouble in the stage playoffs. Um, the Shanghai match is going to be a really interesting proving ground for them to see how well they've adapted in a short amount of time. Speaking of Shanghai, where are they on our power rankings? Oh, new number one, the Dragons. Who'd have thunk it, right? Who'd have, who'd have thunk that the Dragons would be number one here? Highest ranking in our uh, power rankings ever. Now they're sitting at 12 and 9, looking for that playoff spot. How do they keep that momentum going through the 2 2 2 change and everything that they just accomplished last stage to get where they need to be? I think the meta shift will be fine for them. I think the big thing for the Dragons that we've seen them struggle with in season as well is consistency from uh, match to match. They themselves said that they felt, uh, you know, kind of despondent at the uh, Guangzhou charge loss, I believe they had uh, earlier this regular season stage. Um, but that also allowed them to really take a look at how they were playing and improve. And that was one of the reasons why they were able to make the run that they did to becoming stage three champions. So um, I think that they'll be okay. I think the big thing is how consistent can they be, especially coming out of Pacific, where that is the toughest division, right? So their division isn't helping them much. Um, and they're going to have to try to get one of the lower spots and kind of sneak in and play their way up. Uh, so, yeah, they just they really have to be consistent from uh, match to match. And kudos to Shanghai for not only turning around everything, becoming stage champions, but also doing it in the tougher side of the regions. Emily Rand, thank you so much for all of your insight. And for more Overwatch League coverage, you can keep it locked right here on ESPN.com slash esports. Thank <laughs> you.